Thing. Jonathan, tell Tomo Smolka he was going to win this match. <laughs> well, I suppose the secret for Wexford here, Michael, is start like they did against Kilkenny, move the ball at light and pace, get into that full forward line as fast as they can because the full forwards are the ones. If they take on the Cork defence, that's the one area of weakness in the Cork defence. For Cork, I think it's that unquenchable des desire they have to get to the All Ireland and take on Kilkenny again against the this year. I think that's what will bring uh, Cork to the All Ireland. So I'm, I, I'm sure Cork no. is, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. is, is go, tomorrow's going to do the same thing. I think Cork is going to get the other. Well, they told me Donald Wexford you wouldn't take that I many. Know, yes, so there you go for a start. Tomorrow's can you do it? I, I think we can. I think, again, I, I've trapped all year a big performance from my half-forward line, um, particularly Niall McCarthy, Timmy McCarthy, uh, getting into the game from the very start. If, if they don't score, just do one thing, get the ball moving inside, because Joe Dean has been starved of possession all year. Get the ball inside to these guys, and I think they can do the damage inside. Gentlemen, thank you very much. OK, time for us to hand over to our match commentators then. And they are Michael Dygdon and first, Ger Canning. Yes, it's a terrific setting to match what we hope will be a wonderful occasion here as the teams parade around Croke Park. There must be up around 60,000 people here this afternoon. And Michael Dignan, you've gone for Wexford, but uh, both teams, well, there's so much at stake here. The All-Ireland semi-final and uh, Kilkenny are waiting for whoever wins. Yeah, Jerry, but, you know, it's only a hunch on Wexford. Anything can happen, a massive crowd. What I'm looking forward to is, like last year, the game of the year was Cork and Wexford the first year. I think in the replay, Cork ran away from them, but Wexford, Wexford have, what Wexford have done is brought in fresh legs, Maliki Travers and John O'Connor into their back line. And John, John Connor to me, is, is probably the manager with, you know, with the ability to make the best changes in the championship. He had a game plan against Kilkenny. He brought in fresh players last year because of his weaknesses. And I think you know, he'll have a plan up his sleeve today, and that's why I'm, I'm giving Wexford the chance, because of John Connor on the sideline. OK, well, uh, let's take a check on the teams then. And Cork have been forced into change, we know, because of a hand injury sustained by John Gardner in a club football match. His replacement is another member of Cork's under-21 team, Keen O'Connor of Aaron's own. All of which means that the selectors have resisted whatever temptation there may have been to move Tom Kenny out of midfield, where he's established a fine partnership with Jerry O'Connor. Major, the most difficult position to play in Hurling is at centre half forward. And Niall McCarthy is a player that has impressed me greatly over the last couple of years. He's coming up against the best centre backs every day of the year. Every day he goes out hurling. Peter Barry, Ken McGrath, you know, Ronan Kearney's own teammate in training. But today I think he's up, up against the most underrated centre back in the game, and that's Declan Root. I think Henry Shefflin will testify that you know the hardest battles he's had over the last few years have been with Declan Root. And I think if Niall McCarthy can play the same way as, as he has been playing, providing leadership in the Cork attack, that that go a long way to help the Cork win the game. While well, Wexford's major concerns have been in the half-forward line where Paul Carley and Owen Quigley have been nursing injuries, both have been included from the outset, the concern must be over their match fitness. One announced change is the replacement of Barry Lambert with last year's captain Paul Codd. He's one of 11 players starting today who played against Cork at this stage last year. And I suppose it'll come as no surprise the Wexford player I've picked out here, Damien Fitzhenry. Not alone is he a brilliant goalkeeper that like marshes the full back line, but he provides inspiration all over the field. In the Leinster final, he made three brilliant saves against Offaly. He's been known to go up the field in the past and, and, and score, score penalties. But, you know, he's fearless. Watch him here, stood up and nearly tempted the Kilkenny player to have a goal. I think in an era where there's brilliant goalkeepers, Brendan Cummins, David Fitzgerald, Brian Mullins and Stephen Byrne and Offaly, they're all there, but he's the one, I think, that really has set the pace. And if, if he plays well today, Wexford, Wexford will win this game. Little or no breeze about perfect conditions and everything is in readiness. But before we get underway today, there's going to be a minute silence for young Kevin Quinn of the Glanworth Club in Cork, who died tragically on Friday, playing in the North Cork Junior Hurling Final against Newton Chandram. A young hurler, a young footballer, survived by his parents, brother and sister. Indeed, a yes, love day, Gorev at Onam It's time for the national anthem, sung today by Des Willoughby from Wicklow, accompanied as usual, of course, by the Artane Boys Band.
now for the second year in a row. It's Cork against Wexford at this stage in the championship. The referee today, Barry Kelly, one of the young emerging referees who comes from the St. Oliver's Plunkett's Club in Mullingar. Big occasion for him. Cork won the toss and will play from right to left in the first half. Little or no breeze around to influence batters on Dooley. And Mitch Jordan and Rory Jacob have switched corners as the game gets underway. Ahead of us, 70 minutes of action. And a place in this year's Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Final at stake. It's Jerry O'Connor straight away, setting it up for Niall McCarthy. The player who is featured in our scene set. And that ball goes just wide of the posts. That will bring back memories for him, I'm sure. Unpleasant memories of last year's All-Ireland Final, Michael. Yeah, it's one of his weaknesses, you know. Puller hero, John. He creates probably six or seven chances in every game. Maybe puts over two of them, you know, but that's not a good start for him. Damien Fitzhenry, who performed heroics in the Leinster final against Offaly. Broken down there by Mitch Jordan. Mitch has switched across. Yeah, we we'll see both wing backs and both teams have changed. John O'Connor has gone over on Timmy McCarthy, probably for that extra bit of pace, and Rory McCarthy in the other wing. And Sean O'Gahal being not surprised to see him on Paul Codd, two very experienced players, and you'd have a worry about maybe young Keane O'Connor marking a pair like Paul Codd. So Cork would neutralise that straight away by putting Sean O'Gahal over on him. Adrian Fenlon coming up to hit the sideline ball. He's been known to point from this distance. In his 33rd cha- championship match, drops it in, dropped down by David O'Sullivan. Got a stick to it to get it away. Out as far as Sean O'Gahal been. And the wing back from Cork, down deep. Cut out initially by John O'Connor, whipped back down by Timmy McCarthy. Back once again by Rory McCarthy, his namesake. Stumbling there on the ground, but picking himself up on the deck again is Paul Codd, last year's captain. Back towards Adrian Fenlon. Half cut out there by Ronan Curran. Runs on nonetheless there towards Rory Jacob. Across on the far side is Wayne Sherlock. Cork with the only scoring chance so far. Back up it comes here. Quiglish blocked down brilliantly there by Jerry O'Connor. This is uh, Sean O'Gohalpine. Malachi Travers coming out to try and meet this one. He's done well this season. Great ball ahead into the corner. Racing after it is Rory Jacob trying to have the measure of Brian Murphy. Dodging this way and that. That's going left. So a wide apiece. Early chances, but no scores. This was uh, Jacob again, doing well to get onto the ball, getting good primary possession there, but uh, miscuing his opportunity. There from the reverse angle, just as wide from that spot. Billy McCarthy beaten for it, he's lost his stick as well. John O'Connor, here's Niall McCarthy again. Has options, playing it back to Kean O'Connor. Big one in. Oh, cut out brilliantly by Doc. David O'Connor goes by his initials, Doc. Out as far as Rory McCarthy for Wexford. Cut out here by Tom Kenny. Close to the wings when he sends this one in. Watched all the way by David Fitzhenry. And no joy with the shooting so far. Tom Kenny has really settled down very well at midfield, solving something of a problem for Cork right in the middle. But David O'Connor making a good clearance that time. It's Henry's puck out, going left towards Card, batted down by O'Halpin, picked up by Fenlon, sweeping it to the wing, in there beautifully, Rory, Jacob, turning. His brother Mike is under it, so too is O'Sullivan, Jimmy O'Sullivan picking it up first time, inside his own 13-metre line. Very close to the sideline, kept in somehow. And it ends up being a line ball to Cork. The Leinster champions this year, Wexford, will want to atone for last year. They very nearly went out of the championship, but for a late, late Rory McCarthy goal. One of the great goals, we remember, from recent years in Croke Park. But the second day, they were frankly trounced and left their best form behind them. John Conran, will he have hatched a game plan? Brian Murphy, straight over the sideline, Wexford's possession. I think Cork would be very disappointed with that. It's certainly a factor when you're playing Wexford not to give away line balls and those, you know, you have, I get any day of the week, but especially against Adrian Fenlon, because he is well capable of pointing every line ball from 40 to 50 yards. 
Cork thinking about preparing substitutes there. Donald uh, O'Grady tells me it is nephew Brian Dennehy is watching it in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Had hoped to be here to see uh, Cork play in person, but uh, the team couldn't oblige. They lost the Munster final. Had they won that, they would have been playing last week when his nephew Brian was here. Fenlon having difficulty positioning it. Barry Kelly wants the two nearest players back the requisite distance. Finally swiping it in towards Michael Jacob, runs on. It's Jordan's around. So too is Sean Halpine, taking it out of danger, getting it away to the wing too. Keon O'Connor, and a second fine clearance by the young man from Aaron Zone. Niall McCarthy trying to get it up onto his stick. Timmy McCarthy there for help as well. Into clear open space, down towards Kieran Murphy, runs on beyond Doc O'Connor. Their covering is Rory McCarthy. Lovely little take over there, but it's won back brilliantly by Ben O'Connor. Cork's captain, out to his brother Jerry. The new Tom Chandram duo, the twins combined, and it's over the bar. And the first score has taken over five and a half minutes to arrive. Good combined play by Ben O'Connor, on for Jerry O'Connor, and over the bar it went. Very, very talented family from North Cork. Indeed, their sister Paula will be involved in the Camogie semi-finals next Saturday afternoon, play for Cork against Galway. And that'll be uh, a double bill, including a tip against Wexford from Nolan Park, live next week on uh, this channel. The Camogie All-Ireland semi-finals, not to be missed. Kilkenny next Saturday afternoon. Tom Kenny, meanwhile, here on Sunday, robbed by Adrian Fenlon. Into the corner, taken up there by Jacob. Nice lay off towards Owen Quigley, he's a very fine hurler. And he's up to underline that rating, he puts it over the bar from a huge distance out. Owen Quigley, son of John Quigley, a former Wexford star and a nephew of Martin, who's one of three selectors for Wexford this year. That's a great equalising score. Yeah, it's a brilliant score and Jarris was the feature so far is that this is back to the tradition every player playing in their position there's no extra men playing in the back line or anything like that uh, Wexford are just trying to move the ball fast Adrian Fennell hitting a lot of ball on the ground in the middle of the field and their forwards willing to throw the ball around which may be something Wexford haven't done in the past Paul Codd thought he was going to get himself a free but it's gone the other way Barry Kelly signalling that Codd was holding on here bit too long, he was whistling, dragging down, and you can see that it's a free to Ben O'Connor. Yes, the big change in the rules this year that I've seen is that any discretion on the steps at all, if it's four or five, four and a half steps, it's a free straight away, and they're certainly trying to uh, encourage the players to get rid of the ball that faster. Ben O'Connor's first strike is good from the free. Came into this match having scored a goal and 14 points in the current campaign. He's a very assured free taker. And that was from about 50 metres out. This time a bit of variation on the puck out from Damien Fitzhenry. They've always been very clever trying to place these puck outs to uh, gain maximum advantage. Oh, and quickly couldn't hold on to it. Cork settling just a little bit better. I would imagine Wexford's plan was that Keane O'Connor would have been on Paul Codd for, and they would have poked the ball out to him, but now Sean Ogre's changed over. They obviously won't want to poke the ball down on Ron, Ronan Curran, who's probably the best centre-back in the game under the high ball, so maybe they're in a little bit of trouble there, and then Fitzhenry will have to improvise now. That's Keane O'Connor playing in his fourth championship match, started against Kerry with subs and the others. Here comes Tomas Mahan, known as Mossy, shortens the grip on the stick and flashes it over the bar. Cork 2, Wexford 2. And it was very much down to the individual style of Tomas Mahan from the Rapparees. Donalo Cusack trying to place it towards Niall McCarthy. Succeeds. Ruth was a little bit slow to uh, pick up his run. Angling it down towards Jody. Neat pick up. Thought about the layoff himself. Goes for the score. Nice and casual as you like. Very stylish by Joe Dean. And the sharpshooter from Killer gets his first point. You just see him so relaxed in the way he hit that one. Beautiful point. 
In recent uh, matches, I've noticed about Joe Dean, very often he tends to get isolated away from the other players because Cork have, from time to time, been playing more short passing type of game. Here comes Doc O'Connor. They work it away to Fenlon, driving it way down towards Mitch. But Mitch Jordan can't hold it. Belted back once more. And that has gone wide. Well, it was ambitious in the extreme from Ben O'Connor. Fitzhenry playing in his 39th championship match today. So often a star. This is a young star of this season, Brian Murphy. Beyond Dean, but this time a good run by Brian Corcoran. Getting by Darrow Ryan, then checking his stride, laying it up here towards Timmy McCarthy. Stopped somehow. He's put it over the bar, but credit Damien Fitzhenry for making a wonder save. It was all set up for Timmy McCarthy to get a second goal in this championship, but somehow foiled by Fitzhenry. Keeper used his body, he was resourceful, and he got away with it, but it's 4-2. Well, Gerard, that's his bravery, you know, he stood up and watched the ball all the way. He believes he'll save any shot that comes at him, but a brilliant ball across by Brian Corcoran. Brilliant diagonal ball across him, and Roland Kern is absolutely dominating at centre-back for Cork. And I can tell you, many people watching at home will say Timmy McCarthy should have buried that one. Brian Corcoran way out now, 65 metres out from the Wexford goal. The hand pass to space for Corcoran there in numbers. Away with Ben O'Connor, chasing after him as Paul Codd. It's Ben O'Connor now, 30 metres out. And again it's stopped by Fitzhenry at the expense of another point. This is wonderful goalkeeping as Cork have an injured player. Ben O'Connor was raiding once again, struck for his second, he was hit late, but the keeper did well once more. Watch here for the tackle coming in late on him, just didn't quite catch it there. Ben O'Connor being uh, attended to, and there will be immediate concern because... Uh, he doesn't look well. Yeah, I think it was Adrian Fenlon coming across, and you know, first instinct was that maybe his momentum carried him into him, but they might get it from another angle. Well, the concern is for Ben O'Connor, but uh, just immediately before that, the major talking point saves by Fitzhenry, when Cork could have had two goals. It was indeed uh, Adrian Fitzhenry coming in, colliding with Ben O'Connor. Yeah, it was a complete accident. He, he just went in to block him, his momentum carried him in. How Adrian Fenlon got back to cover Ben O'Connor. I'll never know. He's an amazing athlete, uh, Adrian Fenlon. He's been there over the years. You know, it's his 12th championship season. We've seen other fellows. And we can mention a few names who've retired in recent times, but he keeps on going. Well, especially he... in that position, Jerry. You know, yeah. and, and, but he's, he's a forward's dream. Every single ball, he moves it at, at, at extreme pace. Already in this game, he's had a chance to pick five or six balls, but he's hit them all on the ground. Jonathan O'Callaghan is coming in for uh, Cork as a replacement for Ben O'Connor whether that is temporary or permanent we can't be sure but right now Cork are down to 14 and it is five points to two waiting over there is Paul Carley and he has put that one wide Paul Carley his nickname is Chops and uh, the man they uh, didn't pick for today's game Barry Lambert is known as Lamb so you can imagine when they're in the half forward line it's a case of Lamb Chops no joy 5-2 Line ball. They're still attending to Ben O'Connor, but right now he's uh, coming back into the match. You can hear the round of applause. He's gone into top of the right. I think that's just to give him a breather for a little while. Took a hefty knock. Coming off Paul Cobb. Sean O'Go had been about to strike this one. Nicely into the corner. And Joe Dean deemed to have dragged back Maliki Travers. No real complaints from Joe. Always plays with a smile. And they bring Damien Fitzhenry out to hit it. 
the Wexford crowd are getting a bit uh, uneasy. They want to see a bit more fireworks from their team, the Leinster champions. They could have conceded two goals, and they themselves have only scored two, two points. Yeah, the, the big concern for Wexford is under the puckouts. You know, the, the short puckouts aren't working. Players are moving across the field, but Cork are watching them very closely. And any of the high balls, Ronan Curran and Sean O'Gahal being are snuffing them out. But they've been digging in deep over the last couple of seasons, Wexford, building an awful lot of respectability, and uh, people like this team. They're gutsy, they're classy, and they've been winning major matches. Tomas Mahan, that's a huge one way down. What a catch by Dermot O'Sullivan. The Rock, as is known, released outside by Ronan Curran. Fumbled over there, Wayne Sherlock put into difficulty by Owen Quigley. Trying to turn, trying to take on Wayne Sherlock again. Came, uh, I think, off the court man, but it was belted by Owen Quigley when he was out over the sideline. And I think the view of the um of the linesman over there is that it's going to be a court ball. That was some catch. Wayne Sherlock, recognised by his peers as one of the finest cornerbacks in the game at present. And Jeremy Silver has started very well. I think the last couple of games has really settled down. He started the championship a little bit dodgy, but in the last couple of games he's been very, very solid. Went into this match with uh, a hand injury, but uh, didn't show any effects or ill effects there. And he has a huge height advantage over Michael Jacob as well, you know, so Wexford should be trying to get the ball in a bit lower. Although Jacobs has a very good catch, he's got a spring as well. We've seen that in the, the Leinster campaign. Fenlon to hit this one. He's 65 metres out. It's high, it's angling. And Dermot O'Sullivan fumbles, but waiting for it this time is Sean Ogo Halpine. Away he comes. Michael Jacob was chasing after him. They'll try to win it in midfield. It's nicely done out for Jerry O'Connor. From his midfield partner, Tom Kenny. The midfielders combine, and that one is over the bar. Jerry O'Connor's second point. Well, it was a nice pass from Tom Kenny, spotting the run of Jerry O'Connor, and O'Connor's shot was true and accurate. 6 2, 17 minutes are gone. Broken down by Fenlon. Caught whipping on it, but uh, it was a, a no ball, really, in the end. There was nobody waiting inside for it. And it was nowhere near the target. A couple of scores needed by Wexford now pretty quickly. Declan Ruth here, blocked down well by Jerry O'Connor. Second time of asking, it's Fenlon. Players coming in support. Nicely taken once again. Kenny. Off on a run once more, a very athletic player, Tom Kenny. On his left-hand side, good accuracy, there's another one. Cork are dominating in midfield, and between them, the two players, Kenny and O'Connor, have got three points. Winning vital breaks, dominating, and setting up a scoreline of seven points to two. Yeah, I think Wexford have been a little bit naive on the Cork puck -out. Both their midfielders have been dragged back into the Cork half-back line by Jerry O'Connor and Tom Kenny, and they're leaving loads of room then for the Cork half forward. I feel Fenland, Fenland and Mahan should drop back and let their half forward and pick them up. And let the Cork, Wexford half forward and pick them. Cork just winning another Wexford puck out. This time is a trip by Paul Pod on Brian Murphy. Much doubt about it. David O'Sullivan from Cloy. Again, down to another eSport man, Jodine from Killer. Taking on Malachi Travers. Tim McCarthy broke it down, but his namesake Niall showing a lot of urgency, ready to take on John O'Connor, the Wexford captain this year, laying it off towards Niall McCarthy. Left it stead there for Ben O'Connor, happily recovered. That's going right, well to the right, but uh, a couple of players chasing after it. One of them was Kieran Murphy. And it beat him for pace. He doesn't agree. Thinks that uh, it might still have been in play before he got the touch. 
Yeah, Cork, uh, Wexford need to win, start winning some ball here. We're just watching the puckouts again. They've been struggling since they started the game. And you feel if they don't get a, you know, a couple of points in the next five minutes, Cork will pull away from them at this stage. Well, the game needs Wexford to get more and more involved and show a great deal more urgency and intensity. John O'Connor won't be pleased. Pacing up and down the sideline here, just trying to encourage his players as best he can. It's only a five-point difference. They haven't played well, Wexford. Cork have taken most of their chances, but they could at this stage have a score of something like 2-5. Physio out to attend to one of Cork's injured players. It looks to be Keen O'Connor. His father, Mickey, will be a very proud uh, man of playing here today to watch him, his son playing, although Mickey himself didn't have the best of fortune in the first match. He was a selector with the Cork Miners, beaten by Galway. Short sideline ball, Brian Murphy as far as Donalo Cusack, way back down again. Niall McCarthy breaking it and breaking the momentum and the pattern of Declan Ruth as he tries to establish a foothold in platform in midfield. The referee's going to throw the ball in on the 20-meter line. This is uh, what happens here. Just a little pile-up. Throw in taken. And it comes as far as Adrian Fenlon. And uh, again, there was a, a blow which the referee didn't like too much. It's only the fourth free of the game. In that sense, it's uh, moved very swiftly from a Wexford point of view. They've allowed Cork to come and they've allowed Cork to dominate. Ronan Curran. Beautiful take by Ben O'Connor against Rory McCarthy. The referee says Rory was dragging him back. And it's going to be a free in. Cork might have had an advantage had the referee allowed play to continue, but uh, it didn't happen. A reminder that tonight, the Sunday game, will analyse this and yesterday's football games as well, of course. 9.30 on a busy day for sport on Network 2. So Ben has been doing the business so far. Two points, one of them coming from a free. This 50 metres out. He doesn't miss. Back on the ground, which he loves so much and where he won a club medal back on St. Patrick's Day when Newton Chandram became the All-Ireland Club champions, beating Don Loy of Antrim. Let's look at the possession situation. Cork very much the dominant force. Keanu O'Connor struggling with his first touch. The ball was on the line. The linesman decided that the hold of the ball had gone out over the line. One way or the other, the Cork wing back was struggling to pick it up. The Wexford half forwards are, are, are changing positions for the puckouts. They're running to the opposite wing. It worked against Kilkenny, but you know, against Offaly, the Offaly wing backs did. But today, the Cork wing backs just picking up the man from into the area. And it's very energy happening for the wing forwards on a hot day. Well, Adrian Fenlon hoping they can get a break. But they're being stopped, and again it's Sean O'Gohalpi. He's covering back there. He takes too many steps this time. And the referee is certainly laying down the law where that rule is concerned this afternoon. Yeah, this is something that's really frustrating players, you know. It is, and I'm sure Sean O'Gohalpi. Yeah, well, he did take a lot of steps. The referee was right, I think, there. He, he was turned right. around. He was, but generally, you know, up to now, up to this year, you get away with that. You just turn back yeah. onto your, onto the other side and let it off. But the, the refs have, have been, and in fairness, have been very consistent on it. You know, in every game of the year, anyone who takes the extra few steps has been pulled. This is a good young emerging referee. I've seen a lot of the action. He's refereed major Cork and uh, Wexford matches already this season, so they know him well. Paul Carley stepping up to hit this. They need a score. Happy to put that one high and over the bar. First point of three by Paul Carley. First point for a long, long time by Wexford. And they trail by eight points to three, which is not a huge amount. But they haven't been playing well. I just wonder again, when you look at Carley and Quigley, they both scored, Carley from the free, Quigley from play, but they've missed a lot of training because of injuries. That's uh, Doc O'Connor. In towards Adrian Fenlon, trying to shrug aside the challenges. Nicely ahead by Declan Ruth this time, one to race after. 
And Dermot O'Sullivan takes it away from Rory Jacob. Back on his feet again. O'Sullivan's down injured. Still down, getting himself back on his feet as the ball is played into the centre. Lovely control, but lost then. And away to Ronan Curran. And a chance to drive it downfield. He places it instead to Joe Dean. Again, getting there ahead of Maliki Travers. But the quality of the ball to Dean this afternoon is very impressive. Brian Corcoran racing there with Dara Ryan coming into the breach here next. It's Ben O'Connor. It's loose. A lot of loose play. Joe Dean. That's still in there. Jerry O'Connor whipping on it. And it comes off to Moss Mahan. It's gone for a 65. That was a lot of very, very open play there. I could have gone anywhere. Diamond O'Sullivan is still down injured as we watch this again in reprise. But credit to Moss Mahan for tracking back the whole time and following the other midfielder, Jerry O'Connor. Jerry doesn't look as dear, but it's, it's, that is uh, Jerry O'Connor, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That we're watching in reprise here on another monitor. Yeah, the Wexford defender was a little bit more aggressive that time, Jerry. I just feel up to now they've been standing off a little bit, but they're in, in that sequence they got in a couple of fair hits. Uh, Brian Corkner is causing a few problems for Darrell Ryan. Normally, Darrell Ryan would physically be a lot stronger than his opponents, but Brian Corkner has the strength to get out in front of him. The knee is causing the problems for uh, Dermot O'Sullivan. known as the rock for nothing he's uh, as I said been nursing a hand injury but now the knee is the major concern the court physio is having to try and work the oracle where he to go off one of the players they might be considering is Pat Mulcahy who played in last year's All-Ireland hurling final but uh, O'Sullivan is back in business and trying to limp around the place there and hope that he can run it off. Here's the free, 65 metres out. All for that block by Tomas Mahan down at the end line. Ben O'Connor has scored three so far, two of them have been frees. Nice tidy in his approach, nicely swept over. Everything is going Cork's way. And Wexford have looked a pale shadow of the side that we saw here in the Leinster Championship, having beaten Kilkenny, the All-Ireland Champions, first day out, and then having beaten Offaly. That's Paul Carley from some distance out. He's put it wide. And they need those, they need those to be very much on target. This stage of the game, I'm sure the Cork mentors are going to be saying, how far ahead of Wexford do we need to be to be comfortable? Still only in the first half. Timmy McCarthy steadying himself. Looks okay. It's got a white flag. A second point for Timmy McCarthy. Picking up a lot of ball today, Timmy McCarthy. Striking it confidently and sweeping it well over the bar at the Hill 16 end. Watch from the reverse angle. And Timmy will be really happy with that one. 10 3. All the little flicks and the touches of the Cork team. Very much to be admired. Kieran Murphy trying to make headway against Doc O'Connor. Opting to kick it out, but only as far as Niall McCarthy. McCarthy drops it in. Dean's about. Keeper has to be sharp. And Damien Fitzhenry has kept Wexford very firmly in this match. They could be well and truly out of sight at this stage. Fenlon stopped by the opposing centre-half back, but he loses it then, but regains once more. Ronan Curran, who along with Peter Barry must be rated one of the great centre-half backs of today. Tom Kenny from midfield. Oh, it's a great goal! In the 29th minute, Cork had three goal attempts, two of them were foiled, but there was no way that Tom Kenny was going to be denied on this occasion, and Damien Fitzhenry is finally beaten, and Cork are tearing Wexford to shreds. What a goal, what a goal, Jeff, but you wonder, he ran straight down the centre, where's Declan Root, where's Dara Ryan? Nobody laid a finger on him, but Cork are walking all over them. Just way too much pace all over the field. Well, the neutrals watching will say, come on, Wexford, start doing something about it. Wayne Sherlock coming in. They could have another one. Brian Corkins in there. The backs grouping well. 
getting it out there, but losing possession once more. Ben O'Connor turning. That one's gone wide. Fifth wide of the match for Cork, but after nearly a half an hour's play, it has been all Cork, true masters. Watch Kenny again going through, all the way through. The man who was wing back last year, playing today in his 11th championship match, beats Fitzhenry, all ends up. Well, the Wexford fans, if they can do it, they're trying to lift their team. Scoring chances created by Cork, very, very impressive. Yeah, and Ger, we're seeing, you know, we saw it last week with Waterford, a long layoff, Wexford this week, a long layoff. And, you know, it starts begging the question, are you better off than beating earlier in the Championship, you know, than getting six or seven weeks between games? Cork have had a couple of very good games leading up to this with Tipperary. You know, Wexford are sitting at home, training among themselves, can't get any challenge matches, obviously, this time of the year. Signs on, that's not to take from Cork, you know, they're playing a great brand of hurling out there. Moving the ball, and one thing they're doing today is I think they're playing a lot much, a lot better ball into a full forward line, especially Ronan Curran and Sean O'Hara have been who are absolutely dominating in the half back line. Yeah, I think it's a very, very good point. The six weeks layoff doesn't do Waterford or Wexford today any great deal of service. Whatever people say about it being fresh, they don't seem to be sharp for the opening half an hour. And Cork come again. That time it was Kieran Murphy robbed by Dara Ryan getting it away into the centre Declan Ruth sweeping it out left switching out is Michael Jacob up towards Paul Codd breaks down but it's coming straight back as soon as the Wexford backs get it out it's back into their faces once more Joe Dean pick up to over there Margie Travers was in behind him quickly Joe Dean now trying to rob him but Joe Dean to have pushed and it's hit for six to one and half a dozen dinner there. Both of them had a little stumble over the other. Well, he might have been smiling earlier, Joe, but there's a bit of a frown now. Hand in the back, all right. Well, now the Wexford fans are beginning to wonder can they do it in the second half? Is it possible? Fitzhenry. Huge one down. It's Jordan trying to command the situation, but again, it's Ronan Curran. What a great centre half back he is. That's picked up there by Rory McCarthy. Ben O'Connor has discarded the black helmet. McCarthy still stolen away from him. Great steal. Ben moving forward. Lost possession down with uh, Niall McCarthy. Going this way and that. Inside towards Timmy McCarthy. Trying to get it up onto his stick. It breaks loose. Runs out there as far as John O'Connor. It's been a horrendous first half for Wexford. The ball coming straight back in again. This time from Keen O'Connor. To see what the inside forwards can do. And Damien Fitzhenry has been the busiest man around down there. Foul, the referee decides. Three out. I think he was lucky there, Ger, you know, a lot of time in the goal is get the ball, they, they automatically get the free out when, when there's any bit of it. No, he just slipped there and fell. There's no foul, no foul there. But the big difference I see in this half, Ger, is the Wexford, or the Cork team are holding their position. Ronan Curran is holding his position. What, Wexford doing a lot, lot of needless running off the ball, and the Cork players are just staying in their position and picking up all the ball when it comes into their area. This is Mitch Jordan over there trying to get it in as far as Paul Carley. Carley number 10. Kicked away by Tom Kenny. Back there is Michael Jacob. Here he is. Oh, a good steal again by Sean O'Gohal Bean. Lovely block. Beautifully hooked. This time the foul results in a free into Cork. Good work there by Brian Corcoran. But that was a little flick away there, beautifully executed by O'Halpine just moments ago Brother Satanta is probably watching this down in uh, Melbourne where I know his uh, mother Emily and sisters have gone down for a couple of weeks and Satanta has been nursing an injury with uh, shin splints so wish him a recovery quickly two added minutes to be played Ben O'Connor is striking and that has gone over the bar
giving away a free to Cork about 40 to 50 metres out is the same as more or less just asking the umpire to wave a white flag. Fitzhenry away to the left-hand forward position, but over there again is Sean O'Rahalveen, Adrian Fenlon. One back by Tom Kenny. Down towards Brian Corcoran. Darrell Ryan. Well, I hope there is something uh, absolutely legal in the tea at half time <laughs> because they need it. Everybody needs it because this game has gone stale. Yeah, it's very disappointing. We were, you know, we were expecting so much. And I really thought Wexford would come with a big performance, uh, but Cork are just overpowering them. They brought this new game of running with the ball, laying off the extra man onto another level, but I think they've added that they're playing, playing very intelligent hurling, and Ronan Corn and Sean Ogle have been in particular, have been outstanding in their half-back line. Really mopped up everything, and during the Sullivan, then any high ball to come in, he's clearing it easily. Here's Jerry O'Connor. So into the time added on for injuries. Keen O'Connor back once again towards Jerry O'Connor, not related, members of the same clan. And they can perform with style and distinction in Croke Park. And Jerry O'Connor has just got his third point. Not bad for a man who was only a panel member last year. And so many people have been saying to the selectors, give him a chance. This guy can do the business in midfield. This year he's taken his opportunity with both hands. Yeah, he's a great athlete, Jerry. That's what you need to be at top class level now. You need to be an athlete first and foremost. And he's that. He's a great hurler as well. And a great understanding with Ben. The amount of time to lay off the ball to each other during the game is unbelievable. Look at the number of quality balls that Joe Dean is getting right in front of him the whole time. I think silly, too high or in beyond him. Perfectly laid in. Move breaks down, however. The pass, however, comes straight back out as far as Jerry O'Connor, and he punishes Wexford emphatically. Four out of four for Jerry O'Connor. Wexford need to tighten up on him and everybody else. And 1 1 for Tom Kenny. He's eight, eight points in the middle of the field, not a bad return. 113 to three points. It's a complete mismatch at this stage. Wexford will have to do something about it, but have they left it too late already? Ronan Curran. Doc O'Connor. I'm sure the manager, John Conran, who's a great player himself, will appeal to them to show the heart and the spirit and not be overawed by Cork for the second half. That was uh, Tomas Mahan coming through there. He gets his second point out of midfield. And the Wexford fans will live in hope. Good play by the number nine from the Rapparees. Jerry O'Connor's gone off there. I think we, we saw him down a few minutes ago, not feeling too well. And just after the last quarter, he, 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 he went off. To, he went down straight away when he came back to the middle of the field. There was not, no one involved, no other, no other player involved or anything like that. But just as if he's not feeling well. And I think we saw him over the sideline there a few moments ago. Maybe been a little bit sick. Hopefully he'll be OK. Let's hope so, because uh, at uh, half-time, he's been one of the star performers from the opening 35 minutes, but all the stars have by and large been on the Cork team, with the exception of Damien Fitzhenry, who stopped two excellent save, made two excellent saves. At half-time, it's uh, 113 to Wexford's four points. Let's go down for commas on the sideline now to Dara Maloney. Dara? John Allen, from a Cork point of view, it's going so well. It's going so well. Like It's so different to most of our games of the past two years where, where we struggled in the first half and went in, you know, like Wexford, down points and points. Uh, today we've got off to a great start as we did against Antrim, so all in all, we're delighted. John, we let you go. Thank you for your time. We have Liam Dunn here. Liam, uh, Wexford in real trouble out there. What's been going on? Yeah, fierce, fierce trouble, I think, is mild. And I suppose the scoreboard says his own story there, but it's just nothing's going right for him. But, but then in saying that, I mean, Cork are just giving an exhibition of hurling there in 35 minutes. Uh, their half-back line have been dominant. I mean, Jerry and Ben O'Connor have put points over at will. Tom Kenny's great goal, but like the Leinster final, we were slow getting out of the blocks, and off he didn't punish us, but we've got punished today, and only for Fitzy in the goal again, we would have been in big trouble. Is there a way out of this trouble? Well, it's going to take a lot of resolve and heart and guts to come back from this, but I don't know. It's hard, hard to see him coming back from it. If they do, it'll be a great victory. Liam Dunn, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.
It will be a great victory. It's not going to be a great victory. This is Cork's day. There's no doubt about that. It's damage limitation now for Wexford, I think, for the duration of the second half of this match. What a performance by Cork. I mean, you know, you can talk about the problems Wexford might be having during the day here, but the problems are being foisted on them by Cork. Yeah, Cork, I know, were very, very focused, and uh, certainly the, the, the last of Jan Gardner isn't appearing there because Keane O'Connor has had a very good first half as well. But, like, the basis was by Sean O'Galpine and Roden Corn. They've been absolutely fantastic. I mean, Roden Corners must have hit ball them time and time up the feet, but it's the delivery, the hand pass out the wing, the clearings up the wing. Everybody's been bought into the game, and certainly we spoke about the two midfielders, Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor. Four points in the first half of Jerry O'Connor. I haven't seen that performance from a yeah. midfielder for a long, yeah. long time. It's been absolutely so. fantastic. And the, we talked about our half forward line as well. When they have in possession, put the ball inside, inside, into the inside forward line, and they will get the scores inside. Cork are dominant all over the field. Unfortunately for Wexford, they haven't been, they haven't come out of the blocks. The, this, this five, six weeks playoff yeah. seems to be affecting them. Their first touch is letting them down on the big occasion today, and uh, certainly they have an uphill, uphill battle now at the stage. Well, 62,000 people have come here to see this match. We're seeing an exhibition from Cork so far. Sherlock Nan is here with us in the programme as well. They get his thoughts after the commercial break. Gerlach Nan, Tomas McGahey here with me on the panel. I suppose the only hope for Wexford at this stage, gentlemen, is a cork and back off and not show their hand too much to Kilkenny for the goal in the final. <laughs> they played so well in the first half and then they put a cream in it with a magnificent goal. Well, yeah, and they don't back off, Michael. There's no chance of that happening, you know. And with a sound bite there, somebody coming into the game saying, Cork will win today because they have a great manager. No doubt about it. Every time I talk to Don Lord Grady, he believes in the fundamentals of the game. Blocking, hooking, striking and creating space. Now, watch here with, uh, with, with, with Ronan and Curran, the style of the game so far, out to Tom Kenny at midfield. Now, look at him, straight down through the centre. Now, where's Declan Ruth? He's not there because he's dragged out with, uh, by, by Niall McCarthy. Now, what courage to take on David Fitzhenry from that distance. How many, you see all the awfully fellas that got a shot at him but, uh, and didn't score. Look at that for a bullet. Unstoppable in passing. Yep. The secret there was that the gap was left open yep. for him by Nile McCarthy being gone out of it yep. and having Dragon Declan Ruth out of it. Yep. Now, that doesn't happen by, by, by chance. Sure. It happens by good planning. I know Grady believes in that. Yeah, I mean, but like you, for John Conran's point of view, I mean, he will be disappointed with that goal. I mean, the, the whole centre opened up. Yeah. There was no Nobody came in for the wings. Yes. Nobody actually came to the man with the ball running through with the ball. So no alarm bell rang no, anywhere. I mean, yeah. he had and time and to and set up his shot, take yeah. his, take his, pick his corner, you know. And contrast that with Wexford. Uh, Wexford are playing the same game as, the, as they did against Kilkenny. And they're crossing across the field, but it's yep. the cock wing backs that are crossing. Yep. Ronan Corn isn't crossing. No. Ronan is holding the centre. He's standing there in the centre. Ruth should be standing in the centre because you can't let the midfielders come through the centre. Four and points from one midfielder, one two from another. That tells its own story. And the other goal chances that Cork had as well. Damien Fitzhenry, like it was, you know, there was nothing he could do about that goal. He stopped another one or two. Oh, he stopped, he stopped, he stopped. Yeah. Uh, Two rockets of shots, really, and just like I mean, Frank Cocker ball. has played very, very well, and that's a very, very intelligent ball across. Onto Timmy mm. McCarthy, you say, Look, all you've got to do is put it into the back of the net, hit it with one hand, and you see here, look, and it's very brave from David, uh, David Fitz Henry coming out, and he's, he's been fantastic for Wexford all year, and he's again, he's in top form again. Cocker said, Look, this one again, Sit up this one again. Yeah. I mean, the pace that Ben O'Connor has is, is, is frightening just to get away from his marker to get inside. And the shot, and David Fitzhenry comes it over the bar. And uh, I mean, again, when, when the cock half hour line are getting the ball, they're taking on the markers, and the, the, the whole ball seems to be opened up from them. And that would be disappointing from, from a Wexford point of view that there's too much space and too much room beginning to the cock forwards inside there. Early on in the game, you were talking before the match about some of the tactics of cock, and early on we had a Joe Dean point that I think exemplified some of the things you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, Joe's, Joe's a fantastic player, and uh, this is coming from a puckle from uh, uh, Donald Cusick, out of McCarthy, yeah, right? We kind of criticise him maybe from taking pot shots from 60, 70 yards off to, and getting nothing on return. Here was a nice simple ball inside to Joe Dean. Joe out in front of his marker and that's what Joe does best. Gets the ball, turns and it's over the back. And it's great to see Joe back to his best form again today. Really sharp and you know, looking for the ball and looking for scores. Which he wasn't up to now. But yeah. Niall McCarthy is such an important part of that team. You know, and he, mm. I, we were talking before that he's so much criticised. Yeah. Now look at that ball. Not a wild, high, skyting sure. ball into the, into, mm. the, into the square. We say like wonderful we're doing that Sunday. Intelligent ball, front of your corner forward, gets it over the back. Simple game, doing the simple things right. That's what Old Grady believes in. And yeah. that's the win matches. That's right. I mean, it's, that's a, the whole point about it. The manager's putting all the right strings so far for this team. We take a break. We're back after that. Of Olympics, that's Wexford are 12 points down to Cork and Cork very much on their way to the All-Ireland, you would have to say, at this stage. Wexford are back out in the field, no sign of Cork just yet. Is there any hope for Wexford? 
This would be well, one I, of the great I, miracles that they I imagine to John Connor inside in the dressing room now. He's like the army general of the city. He saw just once before doing the battle. He says, consider yourselves already dead. And you can't get any worse after that. So you might as well say, like, the game is over. Let's cut loose and let's show a bit of pride in the jersey because Wexford have always been very, very good at that. Maybe they're not going to win the game, but they can play way, way better than they are. And the only way you'll do that is if you're throw away your, uh, your, your inhibitions, yeah, inhibitions now the and stage, have yeah. a go yeah, yeah, from yeah. all angles. Have a go at every man and give it your best for 35 minutes because it looks like if that is the last 35 minutes of 2004. Yeah, right? the, yes, so they've got to go back to kind of the tradition, traditional game of hit the ball long down, yeah. down the field and stick to their positions and try and get a few scores on the board earlier on. Ready to go over the second half? Let's go back again to Gerald Michael. Second half about to commence. Wexford have made two changes. Keith Rossiter and Dermot Ling have come into their team and uh, the players have gone off. Tomas Mahan is one of them and John O'Connor is the other. It's a new midfield pairing of Bill Owen Quigley and Adrian Fenlon. They need a great deal more freshness and the younger legs perhaps in midfield to uh, shape up to the challenge of Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor. Declan Ruth taking this free, having discarded his black helmet. So can they make a good start? They've got 35 minutes to do something about a gap of 12 points, it's now 11. Well, the team must believe, the fans, I wonder, do they still believe? It would be the greatest comeback of all time. So just about a minute into the second half then as we're watching Dermot Ling try to take possession. Paul Carley playing it back here as far as Owen Quigley. Big huge one in there beyond Rory Jacob runs on safely as far as Donalo Cusack. Fedlin taking it down well. And passing it to Rory McCarthy. Quick look up. This time Corker drifting back. Wexford are coming at them, but that one is saved by Donalo Cusack. Dermot O'Sullivan driving away down the middle of the field. Ben O'Connor leaves it there. It's left as far as Declan Ruth. Trying to establish a mastery. Dropped there by Ronan Curran. Brian Murphy is in there smartly. Paul Cudd trying to take it up onto his stick. Just trying to get it forward. Stopped by Sean O'Gohalpine, who had a great first half. Out towards Keon O'Connor establishing himself towards Joe Dean, this time it's mopped up by Malachi Travers the hand pass into Adrian Fenlon on his right hand side, partly blocked way down Dermot O'Sullivan with another great catch, dragged to the ground great full back play by The Rock dragged back by Michael Jacob that was a great catch wonderful fetch and real frustration for Jacob from Aular the Balach yeah, Joe Wexford started a bit bright, bit more brightly. Or Rory McCarthy had a good chance to put a ball over the bar. There. You know, they would have had a couple of scores on the board. But um, Cork, judge of my dad there from Dermot O'Sullivan, don't look like they're going to take the foot off the pedal. Joe Dean, that was a great take. Inside towards Brian Corcoran. Battling away with Dara Ryan. Left there initially for a Corcoran to pick up, but he didn't manage to do so. They try to roll it up onto the stick there. Everybody's in after it. Maliki Travers, the player on the ground. Referee will throw the ball in. Just uh, didn't come up nicely. And a bit of a pile-up. Referee in to quickly settle the issue. Maliki Travers playing in his fourth championship match. Came on as a sub for Dave Guiney in last year's semi-final against Cork. Fenlon whipping it the first time, didn't make any headway. Brian Corcoran. And another real pile-up. This time there's a knockdown. And Adrian Fenlon not one bit pleased, but it's going to be a free into Cork. Barry Kelly awarding the free here in front of an attendance of 63,223, which compared to uh, last uh, Sunday's 51,000 is a good deal up. It just goes to show you how, uh, in recent years, the attendance for semi-finals has gone literally through the roof. Not too long ago, when not too many people wanted to go out to see the semis. Waited for the final. That time it's Joe Dean tapping it in over the bar, off the stick of Damien Fitzhenry, and Dean will take the credit. It's his second point, and it's 1-14 now. 
to five points. Rolled it up very confidently. Didn't quite have the legs, but touched over by the goalkeeper, who wasn't taking a chance. Sean O'Go how beats back there. Another good lengthy clearance, but not uh, well directed. Owen oh, Quigley angling it across. Nicely over there, as far as Rory Jacob taking on Murphy. Wexford needed scores and Rory Jacob couldn't oblige. Well, the story of the day so far as Wexford have their fifth wide is that none of the inside forwards who started out today, Mitch Jordan, Michael Jacob or Rory Jacob, has managed to score. This time it's one McCarthy leaving it for another. Timmy advancing. Not quite sure he was playing that hand pass. There was nobody coming from behind. This time it's securely in as far as Jerry O'Connor. Four points for the day so far. And he's having a field day. He may not even win man of the match after all of that. Because there are so many stars about. But it was a good pass from Timmy McCarthy on for Jerry O'Connor. And uh, it's a great return by the number nine. Well, Wexford have to keep on fighting and hope that they can get a break or two somewhere. They have to live in hope. Niall McCarthy trying to extinguish any hope. Well, he was intending to play a pass in for Timmy McCarthy, but it breaks in any case to Kieran Murphy. Murphy advancing beyond Doc O'Connor. Still Murphy goes for the point. It's his first of the day. Good foraging, good approach work, showed strength and resolution, took his score with aplomb. David O'Connor was uh, trying to hoop, trying to take it off him somehow, but uh, didn't quite manage it. Clever play by the Sarsfields player from Glenn Meyer. Good score. Brian Murphy. Brian Ball. Uh, Jerry, even the basics of the game are going away from Wexford now. Their heads are down, confidence is low. Last couple of puckouts, you know, two two extra men going for the one ball, and the Cork man just slipping in behind and picking up the loose ball. And, you know, um, Cork have come out and you know they've kept up the tempo now in the second half. Sometimes you can come out and maybe drop the heads, but you know you have enough done. But Cork aren't playing that way. It looks like they're going to go and, and, and win by what they can here. Ben O'Connor. It's tearing through. Keith Rossiter trying to get a tackle in. Laid off again to Jerry O'Connor, and he sets off in another gear. He started out in first, must be now in fourth. He's flying. Six points out of six shots for Jerry O'Connor. Some exhibition of, some exhibition of midfield play. Uh, I, I, I was lucky enough to be at the Newtown Chandra Malak against both during, during the year and the club, and the understanding between the two O'Connors is unbelievable. The amount of times one of them would take on the ball and lay it off the other who'd be running in support and rash again at county level now. Here's Wayne Sherlock. Between them, the two O'Connors, the twins, have got 11 points so far for Cork. Stumbling there, Brian Murphy. Mitch Jordan can't benefit. Plays for the Marshall Stones Club, which is an intermediate club in Wexford. Well, the Cork fans may be down in the wool and just want to see their team into the final, but they'd like to see a decent match as well, and this isn't a decent match, it's too one-sided. <laughs> oh, how deep. Roy McCarthy cutting it out well. Good play by McCarthy, down then by the other McCarthy, Niall McCarthy. It's like they're having a championship of their own, the McCarthys. Free to Declan Ruth. I've got a couple of Wexford goals. No joy. Donalo Cusack belting it away. Keith Rossiter. Dropping in dangerously, but again the goalkeeper, sun in his eyes, responds very positively. Sweeps it away, knowing exactly where there are going to be players to pick up the loose pass. One of them now, McCarthy. The other man there as well was Tom Kenny. Malky Travers skids, can't take it. Joe Dean instead, lobbed in. All the way, oops, lands on the net, and over. That's three for Dino. Yeah, he's prospering today, Jarrah. You know, I think the last few games, Cork were doing a lot better running game out the field and taking shots, but they weren't playing much ball into the far end. But today they're playing a lot more ball 
into Jodine and his passing was a great hurler and you know, all he needs is a decent ball in front of him, he'll win it every time. As I say that, Malik Travers comes out the next ball. I think you'd need to have a deep faith at this stage to give Wexford a chance. Still, you never know. Paul Codd. That's not bad. Last year's captain, Paul Codd. Taken off, in fact, in the replay against Cork. Not the match where uh, a number of players had a sponsor's name on their hurls, and uh, he was one of them. Tom Kenny battling with Adrian Fenlon. Knocked forward once again. Ronan Curran easily taken away from Rory Jacob. That time Joe Dean deemed to uh, be the guilty party. Free to Wexford. Declan Ruth ready to take. At this stage, it's really damage limitation for Wexford. But you, you feel they should keep taking their points, you know, and plug away. They've hit three or four balls into the goalie early on, kind of going for goals. Here's Mitch Jordan. That's a lovely move inside. Cod, great block. Combination of players there. Kenny was there, and so too was Wayne Sherlock. Back out again towards Dermot Ling. Ling trying to go through the eye of a needle. Played outside to Paul Carley. And that finishes going wide. Story of the day for Wexford. Getting absolutely nothing. A horrible experience for them and their fans. Not that the Cork people are going to mind too much. They just want to get back into the final again against Kilkenny. That was a wonderful block there. It was Tom Kenny who got the touch on it. Larry Murphy's coming in for Michael Jacob. Let's see what Larry can do. Wearing number 25, coming in for his... 36th championship appearance. He's gone in to full forward, ready to renew acquaintances with Dermot O'Sullivan. Ruth watched it all the way. Think better in the second half, but uh, the damage has been done to a very large extent. Oh, a simple pass ahead. Niall McCarthy shooting practice. The fans are loving it. Wexford fans must hate every solitary second, and you can't blame them. 190 to six points. Well, one of our panellists, Jerry Lochnan, was making the point before the start of the match that this Cork team have been putting up huge tallies all through the year. And in spite of that, they lost a great monster final narrowly. Here's Tom Kenny. They want to make amends for last year. David O'Sullivan wants to get on the score sheet. It's a love inside to Dean. It would have been a great goal had he made contact. Cork still chasing, still hungry. Other sides might have just said, well, we've got enough on our plate. We've done well. Dean says no. Keep hammering those balls in and over the bar. Make absolutely certain, I'm sure he's saying, until you're about 50 points ahead. Yeah. Brian Corcoran. Yeah, again, Brian Corcoran there, Jerry. You know. He's really shown his worth. He sets him back in now. He was out of intercounty for a few years, but the last couple of games, he's providing great leadership and he's a great man to tackle when the ball is not with him. And he's setting up an awful lot of scores. I'm glad our statistician, statistician today has told me how many points are in the game. 17 at this stage. Here comes Rory Jacob to try and eat into it. They deserve something. They get nothing. Good stop by Donalo Cusack. And Mitch Jordan is the man who was denied. It was a glorious opportunity. Goal chances for both teams. That was the best one there for uh, Wexford. Good play by Donalo. Well, after that, I think you'd need to believe in tooth fairies and Easter bunnies to think that Wexford are going to win this one. Of course, you tipped them, didn't you? I tipped them, so <laughs> bad day for me. I should have stayed in Spain and Holders. <laughs> Think of some Wexford people who are in touch with the holiday operators immediately to get you out there. I, got, I, I, I had a text at half time from one of my friends from once who reminded me that it won't be an all Leinster final this year. Declan Ruth from the 65 scores a point. Fuck out's taken quickly. Referee says, let's take it again. He hadn't blown the whistle. So take two. 13 minutes into the second half, nearly 14 in fact.
and runs on towards a combination of players. And it's Joe Dean who is in to benefit, denied a little while ago. Great stop! It's Henry. He deserves an all star. Just give it to him. Wonderful, wonderful save by Damien Fitzhenry. 65. Joe Dean cracked it into the corner. Oh, it's a wonderful piece of goalkeeping. What can you say about the man, Roger? I, I suppose it's all been said, but he, he, he's just unbelievable. He never never said I. It just shows you what Cork are like. You know, Joe Dean, you'd imagine you just tipped that ball over the bar at this stage of the game, so far ahead. But, you know, they're all they're hungry. And you know they want to win by whatever they can and send out a message to Kilkenny that you know that they're, they're serious contenders for the All Ireland. It's obvious now that they are. Ben O'Connor is four from four from three so far from the 65. Then that has gone wide. Comes from the Duffery Rovers club, which should have been known, I think, in Wexford as a very strong footballing club. That's. Jim at Ling over there, mention of Ling, there's a, a man, Jim Ling, watching it in Connecticut, won't be too happy, he's a Wexford fan, as his team are taking a bit of a hammering here, and Rory Jacob isn't too pleased with the close attention of Dermot O'Sullivan. Free it for Paul Carley to take. his second point of the day well his preparation as we mentioned earlier was uh, really hampered by injuries in the build up to it but watch Dean again and you could just make a little video right now of all the saves of Damien Fitzhenry this season wonderful goalkeeping the Fitzhenry name has been on many a Wexford team down the years Seamus among his brothers Driven away down. That's a great score. Great, great score. It's Maliki Travers who's come up from cornerback to strike it from the near Viana club. Very well, good player, Jerry. His first year, full, full year in the Wexford team this year, you know, and he's, he's done really, really well. Under a lot of pressure there with all the ball going into the car fires, but he's one for the future. One for the present, Brian Corcoran, and indeed a man who's been hurler of the year twice in the past, came back from retirement, shifting some heavy punishment, and it's going to be a free. We've got it three times. Got it three times, yeah. you're right. Watch him again. The Clark fans obviously didn't count them, but they're giving a bit of a boon to the ref, but he did catch it three times. Ronan Curran getting up, breaking it down. Sean O'Gohal Bean. All the way through that half back line. Declan Ruth. Nice ball positioned into the corner there. That's Rory Jacob. Outside the 45 meter line. Bad shot. Confidence is gone. Just not happening. Some people will ask the obvious question, Michael. I may as well ask it to you. Wexford playing today, people will say, how do they catch, how do they beat Kilkenny in the Leinster semi-final? What do you think? Yeah, well, they played a lot better than this. Like, the thing about that day was they went out with a plan. It was fresh, it was new. They were, you know, bringing players all over the field, playing short puckouts, and Cork were ready for that today as well. But you just get the feeling maybe that Kilkenny maybe started slowly this year. We're thinking to get over them, get into an All-Ireland final by just winning a couple of matches, and they were probably pacing themselves to go for the three in a row. And I think the other thing was that, you know, Cork really came out of the blocks very, very fast today, and well, Wexford just had no answer. At this stage, we're going to have the first All Ireland final ever between two teams who came in through the qualifiers. Tough on Wexford, tough on Waterford as well. Right now, Wexford looking for a consolation score, getting it for Mitch Jordan, his first point in the 54th minute. Still enthusiastic West Wexford followers here. Still willing to cheer on their team. They like the spirit and commitment of their players. They love their hurling in Wexford, always have. 
I mentioned the followers. I think the Cork team have taken this particular group of hurlers very much to their hearts. They had a couple of lean years, but they're back. Next, coming up on this channel, we're at the Olympics at 5.30. Lots and lots of action right throughout the evening. And, of course, the Sunday game is back with you at 9.30. Adrian Fenlon. Well, fair play to both sets of supporters, in particular the Wexford fans. Their team trailing by 13 points, and they're still cheering and cheering. Still about 15 minutes to play. It's where it was a two-point game. Oh, Halpine loses it. Ling was trying to advance with it, stopped, however. Good, solid, determined play by Wayne Sherlock from Black Rock. To his left, Niall McCarthy opening up the broad shoulders, swinging it expertly. And he's got a second point. The perfect finish there from Niall McCarthy. The perfect afternoon for many of the Cork fans. Well, the action area, as you can see, pretty well defined. Roland Curran. Here's Declan Ruth. Underestimated to some extent as a centre-half back, but he's a very effective performer nonetheless. It's an era when Hurling has three or four really good number sixes. Peter Barry, think of Ken McGrath as well. Right now, think of Mitch Jordan. He's got another two in a row for Mitch. And 121 to 11 points. Confident turn. At this stage, Wexford just being allowed a bit uh, of extra space because the intensity in the court game has naturally enough dropped. Kenny showing artistry. Nice cohesive play, linking up with Curran. Driving forward Niall McCarthy. Towards Jerry O'Connor. That is a great flick by there by Owen Quigley, getting it away. Adrian Fender, now his midfield partner, swept in there by Ronan Curran. Back towards McCarthy. Oh, careless pass as far as Keith Rossiter. Comes on here to Paul Codd. Plenty of shooting practice. Just in case now what the final score is going to be. Two points for Codd. You know, Parker relaxing a bit. and well, Obviously, I'd say at this stage, with that running game, it's very hot out there. They're probably feeling it a little bit now. and They'll probably ease off now in the, la in the last ten minutes. See Ron and Corn and Dermot Sutherland are still driving them on out there. They're not too pleased about that score. A bit of sloppy play from Niall McCarthy. Donalo Cusack straight down the centre. Cork trying to win their own puck out, but Keith Rossiter taking the drop ball comes back to Niall McCarthy. Well blocked on by Declan Root. He's had a good second half in spite of the big, big gap between the teams. Dermot Ling fired forward once again. By Brian Murphy from Bride Rovers in Rathcormack, North Cork. Rory McCarthy now from the St Martins Club. There's was a really good block there by Declan Ruth. Very fine skill. Tom Kenny with a goal and a point. Lobbed into space. Rossiter winning the race for it. Chasing after him, trying to win the duel, was Ben O'Connor. Absolutely identical twins, Ben O'Connor and Jerry O'Connor, when they take the helmets off. No way in the world can you make out who's who. But you can tell them on the hurling field, their style is similar, and they're so effective and so decisive. Going to be a change. Wexford are about to bring on Chris Hopper McGrath. He's going on in place of Paul Carley, I believe. So a couple of changes been made by John Conran and his fellow selectors. Ruth lobs this one to the left, and it has gone wide. 
you say a couple of Cork subs warming up now, John. It's just something that struck me over the last couple of years that Cork are very slow to bring on subs, you know, especially when they're going well. And you can understand the thinking of it, but what happens is maybe today it's not going so well. You haven't blooded these subs, you know, and they haven't played that much championship hurling. And maybe, you know, when you get an opportunity like this with, 20, with maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago, you could have brought on two or three players and give them a taste of championship hurling. Well, I think uh, Donald O'Grady, by nature, is very loyal to the players who go out and serve him well. And uh, he's saying, get on with the job, Wayne Sherlock. But you do make a very good point that uh, the baby in a crisis, perhaps in the All Ireland final, might need a key player in a key position. Picked up again by Ben O'Connor. Well, there are quite a number of changes for Cork this year from last year. Brian Murphy's new, and uh, Kieran Murphy's new at the other end. And this is Brian Murphy put under pressure by Rory Jacob, back towards Adrian Flennon. Flennon lobbed in well towards Mitch Jordan and Sean O'Gohalpin, along with uh, David O'Sullivan, hands and knees job. Larry Murphy's coming in, take that, says Larry. And David has seen it all before and felt all the knocks before. Strong man that he is. And, uh, there is going to be a change now for Cork as we watch this in reprise. And... Uh, Joe Dean is going to make way. Uh, Timmy McCarthy is going to make way. And uh, coming into the side will be Jonathan O'Callaghan, number 22. And also going in there, I think, is John Paul King. I think they've got a glimpse of number 27. Played here on club final day for Newton Chandram. Joe has played his part, so too Timmy McCarthy. They can now prepare for the All-Ireland final. There's only nine minutes left in this. It's been a foregone conclusion for a long, long way back in a very disappointing one-sided final where Wexford simply didn't perform. They were disappointed hugely last year in the replay, and this is probably an even more bitter disappointment. Referee is calling back there. Owen Quigley for the foul here on Jerry O'Connor. Owen, who is uh, getting a yellow card for that, being watched in a distant land in Sydney by Kean and Connor related to him. Kean and Connor Quigley, fathers from Wexford, mothers from Cork. They'll be disappointed, but uh, I think that one of them at least is from Cork, so pretty happy, I'm sure. That's Ben O'Connor, and that's another one. He's only missed one. Six points for Ben O'Connor, 12 points for the O'Connor boys. away by Wayne Sherlock Ryan trying to get a touch to it denied however by Doc O'Connor Declan Ruth that's out by Jerry O'Connor to the wing as far as Key and O'Connor challenged by Owen Quigley trying to turn does well well it's a very bad experience a black day for Wexford but uh, we need Wexford to come back strongly in 2005 like we need so many other teams because really when you look at it there are only about nine counties with a realistic chance of winning the McCarthy Cup at any one time here's Tom Kenny he's got a goal already look going for another trying to set one up for Callahan's over there and that's up and over the bar for Jonathan O'Callaghan one of those players who's very close at all times to the starting 15. And that was nicely set up for him, and that's where he gets his first point since coming on. Now the change for Cork is being made. Jerry O'Connor is now going off, and Mickey O'Connell from Middleton is coming in. Time to give the substitutes an opportunity to sample the fair, to prepare for mid-September. The rematch of Kilkenny, the All-Ireland champions from 2003, and Cork, the team they beat on that occasion. O'Callaghan is wide. Just to go back on that subject of Kilkenny and how they lost in the semi-final to Wexford, were they doing, do you think, and maybe there was an implication of what you said earlier, a kind of Kerry in the 1970s when they had a super football team, 
building gradually but aiming to peak in September. Well, yeah, you would have to be, you know, when you're, I think at this stage with Kilkenny, they've been so successful over the last few years that they can't just peak for every game. So maybe, you know, I wouldn't say they didn't prepare because they'd always respect Wexford, but I would say they kept a little, tried to keep a little bit in the tank for later on in the year and it backfired a bit. But then, you know, when it was put up, them went on beat Galway. And I actually thought when they had to go to a replay against Clare that all the matches would catch up on them, you know, but it hasn't, and they've got stronger and they're now they're back in the final. And going for three in a row is some incentive for them. Cork Field Day should have won last year, big incentive for them, so looking forward to a great final in a few weeks' time. Certainly are, and looking into 2005, a new style championship being tried out. Let's hope it's successful. Let's hope more and more counties come into the serious hunt for glory. Curran lobbing it in there. It was Murphy was in after it, stopped by Damien Fitzhenry the crowd having paid their uh, their bucks to come in here have decided they might as well sit enjoy the occasion enjoy the hurling we know the issue is no longer in doubt but at least let's enjoy ourselves in Croke Park on this Sunday afternoon in August Wayne Sherlock nice ball ahead here Tom Kenny that's going to the left so about four and a half minutes are left Owen Quigley is about to be replaced and interesting that both uh, Paul Carley and Owen Quigley who came in with injuries have now been replaced the latest replacement is Barry Lambert runs through here to Paul Codd two points in the match could be hooked in yet Everybody's in after it. Not too far away. Chris McGrath, the young hopper, was closest there. It's gone for a 65. Cork's defence there just uh, taking a siesta. Declan Ruth lobs it in again, inviting Larry Murphy to have a lash for a goal. Blocked out by Dermot O'Sullivan, out as far as Sean O'Go had been. Tom Kenny taking it to himself there. Finding a support player, it's Mickey O'Connell from Middleton. Man who once scored eight points in his debut, and he scored a wonderful point here from right in the middle of the field. Mickey O'Connell putting down a marker. If Cork need a midfielder, he's about ready for the job, ready and able. Mickey score 124 now to 12 points. When Sherlock is going to be replaced as well by John Brown, one black rock man for another. Sean O'Gohalpine just keeping the supply of ball moving inside. Two and a half minutes to go. for people are saying mercifully yeah it's been a big anti-climax I suppose to say the least everyone expected so much and, you know what a crowd up there today the Wexford supporters as we often said in the past probably the best in the country so loyal and you know to stay true enough but they'll be very disappointed as will the players you know they didn't come up here to play like this today but you have to take off your hat to Cork you know they really came with their home with done ran at, ran at Wexford from the early stage and, and just tore them apart with pace and, and, and accuracy it's the third match I've seen here in Croke Park this weekend, and in each case you could honestly say that one of the teams turned up for the match flat. And Wex would have been flat here, and Cork have been absolutely sharp, in spite of that effort there by Brian Corcoran, who hasn't scored in the game. Well, Papa Kahi is going to come in now in place of Dermot O'Sullivan. Late, late substitution. Pat, who was injured in a car accident back in March, and miss so much hurling. It's a big, big cheer. It's a big cheer as well for David O'Sullivan. So everybody now who can get is getting a run out. I think Cork have used all five of their subs. Well, then Curran breaks it. It's Fenlon who knocks it ahead. Brian Murphy. Now Ronan Curran. Ben O'Connor away again, zipping forward, going for the score himself, he's still looking so fresh, 
score of seven points, magnificent performance on a day when Cork were in a different class. 125 to 12 points. Nobody would possibly have thought that it, the scoreline would be like this in the 70th minute. Good catch by Dermot Ling. Rory Jacobs setting away or attempting to do so, stopped by John Brown. Out as far as Keane O'Connor. And remember Cork performing today with one of their without one of their more most influential halfbacks. John Gardner. One extra minute to be played. That's John Paul King. Good ball ahead towards Mickey O'Connell. Looking for his second shot on the target. Lobbed in. Should be the keepers. Wexford star, Damien Fitzhenry, doing everything he possibly could. But it was a day when it all went south for the team. Yet it's a year they'll finish as Leinster champions, breaking the long winning cycle of Kilkenny teams. And now just a case of waiting for the inevitable final whistle and looking ahead to Cork against Kilkenny to see who wins the championship. As Jonathan O'Callaghan goes through with yet another one. A second point. Uh, Joe, when you look at probably Damien Fitzhenry, Doc O'Connor and possibly Dara Ryan, you know. Doc O'Connor and Damien Fitzhenry certainly and Dara Ryan played reasonably well. But after that, you know, the rest of it beaten in every other position, hands up. And all the car players have played really well and done what they've had to do. Very, very economical and played with a lot of class and style. O'Callaghan inside to Brian Corcoran. Good block there by uh, Dara Ryan, doing well. Well, what other, whatever other people may think, uh, we all wanted the best two hurling teams in the land to be in the final in September. And I think there can be no question of doubt, the best two are Kilkenny and Cork. Now it'll be the battle for supremacy. People will feel, many do, that Cork left it behind last year. Kilkenny will want to emphasise their mastery. It should be a fascinating contest as we watch Niall McCarty go through, drag down, free from the 20-metre line. Only about uh, 10 seconds of this purgatory for Wexford to go and endure. Uh, well, Joe, yeah, I'd agree with you there. Both the best two teams are in the final. They showed great bottle both and coming back from being beaten in the provincial championships and had to win some hard games along the way. Kilkenny certainly didn't plan to have to play all the games they had to play and the short run were met in a month where they beat Galway and Clare hit Clare twice they're in the final part of everything today and you know very one-sided very disappointed for Wexford and for their supporters but fair play to Cork uh, top class display for the record it's an 18 points win for Cork Mickey O'Connell came on to shine with so many of the substitutes but players like Ben O'Connor the captain who got 8 points his brother Jerry who got 6 Tom Kenny, who got a goal and a point out of midfield, and they really just emphasise the class they possess. It's going to be a wonderful final, I'm sure, after today's lopsided semi, which finishes Cork 127, Wexford 12 points. One of the stars of the show is uh, Cork's fullback, Dermot O'Sullivan. He's talking now with Darren Maloney. Dermot, that was most impressive. Yeah, I suppose for us it was all about coming up, getting a result, get ourselves back into an all-earning final. You know. We came here, we went about our business as best as we could, and we're, we're glad to get the chance to be back there. Were you surprised you were so far ahead at half-time? Well, this team, we know our capabilities, we know what we're good about. You know, we know our strengths, we know our weaknesses. Um, I suppose we were surprised to be so far ahead in the way with the performance Wexford had in the Leinster semi-final and the Leinster final. But, you know, as I said, this team is all about character, and we showed it well there today. The motivation, as you said all year, get back to the All-Ireland final, and it's Kilkenny again. That'll be fun. Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, it's appearing everybody wanted, but, but for ourselves, you know, it doesn't matter who we play, it's all important for us to be back in an All-Ireland final, and we're delighted to get the chance. Well played and well done. Thanks Thank you. Much. Yeah, fine performance from the Big D himself today, all, all of his colleagues, and congratulations indeed to Cork. Let's go back into Darrow, I think he might have somebody else to talk to. Sean Ogo, helping. that was a very, very impressive day for Cork. Yeah, to be honest, Darrow, we're happy with the result. Um, I suppose we, could, we came up here knowing that we had to win. 
and we did that. So we're very happy. We got, I think, we got four weeks break. Regardless of who won today, they're, we're going to be, uh, they're going to go in as underdogs and find Kilkenny a great team. But uh, we'll knock it on for four weeks now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All over the park, in practically every position, you were on top today. Yeah, to be honest, now I'd say since Donald took over, now this is our first game in two years that we really kind of took. Uh, took the opposition in the first half. Usually, usually we'd rely on our performance in the second half to get us through, but um, we were in a good position going in at half time, and I suppose uh, too small on the Hebra, so it worked for us today. What did Donald say at half time? Because when you have a big lead like that, it can be tricky to keep it going. Do you know what? Donald's a very hard man to please. Like, Donald's a perfectionist, and uh, he wasn't happy with the last 10 minutes going into half time. He felt that we squandered a lot of chances, so. Uh, I think he kind of reminded us what we had to do in the second half because, you know, people could get carried away. And uh, to be honest, it was just once we got stuck in the first 10 minutes, put the ball over the bar, I suppose it was easier then. So Kenny again in the final? Yeah, they're a tough team to beat now. They're, I mean, they're a great team now, Dara. But to be honest now, you know, events in the past, no one sport, you know, even the greatest domain, Ali himself were beaten. So we'll go in knowing that we have a chance and... If we're, if we're breeding on the 12th of September, we have a chance, so we hope to be breeding that day. Well done. Thanks for talking to us. Brian Corcoran is here. Brian, come on in here. Uh, the word impressive has been used so much in the few minutes since the game is over, but it was a fabulous display today. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't think Wexford played as well as they can. I, think, I suppose we hit the pitch running really, and uh, we know we got some great scores in the first half. I think the goal put a bit of space between the two teams, and you know we had a good lead at half time. But I think you know the second half, to be fair, both teams were tired. It was a very warm day. So I wouldn't be reading too much into the, the difference in score. You know, it's going to be a totally different game against Kilkenny in four weeks' time. You mentioned that at the start um, that you made to the match. It was brilliant. You really hit the ground running. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we knew that it was important to get a good start. We knew the same against Antrim, and uh, luckily we got it today and we got it that day. But, uh, you know, we're going to need it in four weeks' time as well. Well done. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Congratulations. Yeah, Donald O'Grady, the manager in the background there. I'm sure he's pleased with the day's work for Cork. He couldn't but be pleased with that kind of performance. And Tomás Mulcahy, of all the Cork teams that you played on, I'd say you probably didn't win too many games, too many big games like that anyway. But that kind no, of score. it's phenomenal score, Michael. 127. And I mean, every point was as good as the one that went before it, you know. So, I mean, they'll have to be very, very uh, happy with the performance today. So I'll set up now nicely for a couple of weeks' time. 28 titles each, Cork and Kilkenny. It's going to be some build-up. Uh, Do you think that was a motivating factor in the... Th I mean, of course it was, it was part of it, but how much of it was? <coughs> I, I mean, there's a, there's a big desire inside there to win in All-Ireland, right? I mean, they, okay, they had their chance last year, they felt they left their, left their after them. Um, Kilkenny would feel otherwise. When you're playing Hurland, Michael, you get a taste of success. Getting to an All-Ireland final, you'd, lo you'd love to go back there every year. I mean, that's part and parcel of the game. And uh, certainly a bit of kind of jigging around with the team, the placing of the midfield, Jerry O'Connor and Tom Kenny has helped the team grow as well. Bringing back Brian Corcoran, even Brian didn't score today, but like we didn't see Darren Ryan going down the field making those big clearances. He's a big presence around the square, and if he's not winning possession, the ball is breaking off to somebody else. I mean, overall, I mean, you have to be very, very happy with the performance. Um, again, who goes in as favourites the next day remains to be seen because like Kilkenny have come back on the basis of having great victories themselves. And it just shows, I mean, you lose the first round of your championship match now. There's an avenue to get back in there, or there was an avenue to get yeah. back in there. But the more games you play, the better you get. And it certainly didn't help Wexford's cause today. They've been out for five, six weeks. You could see their first touch eliminated, gone, was gone from them completely. And uh, they didn't get the start that they wanted to, and uh, they paid the price for it. One thing that Donald O'Grady will be telling his team in the next couple of weeks, Gerlach Nan is, and this is the extraordinary <coughs> thing about it. I mean, Wexford had a bad day today, but they have a trophy to show from their efforts this year, the Leinster Championship. Cork have won nothing yet. No, Michael, and I said after the game last week that I thought that the Kilkenny's victory was a very bad result for Wexford. I think it deflated Wexford. They'd love to have the prospect of meeting Watford in the All-Ireland. Now, I think today is, is, is a good result for Kilkenny. The more Cork won by today, the better Kil Kilkenny will like it, because the more motivated they will be coming into the All-Ireland. Now, Tomás has alluded there to mm. 28 All-Irelands each. <coughs> you know, the battle is on. <laughs> yeah. Kilkenny have never led the role of honour. They have yeah. caught up. It's, mm. it's all been catch yes. up. Yeah. This is their chance to do it. This is their chance to win three in a row. They have never done it. Who would like best to stop them for that? <laughs> Cork. As well as that, there's a little residue hanging over after last year. Cork thinking they should have won it. Kilkenny resenting the fact that Cork that are thinking yeah. that they should have won it. Because Co Kilkenny won it. Yeah. There's a pile of people, as we said at the start, there that said they should have beaten Kilkenny. This is the showdown. You know, in four weeks' time. 
We've been on Ireland every year and we all look forward to it. Yeah. Rarely have we looked forward to one, the one that's coming up in four weeks, like, like the one that's coming up in four weeks' time. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Of course, you're going to see that live here on RT television when it comes to it. However, what's going to come up next is a commercial break and more analysis of this particular game right after that. This world has yeah. gone against the Wexford this world. We've seen it in the football as well. And certainly, I mean, how do you prepare a team for six weeks? You go training or do you play challenge matches? You play games behind closed doors. But you cannot. I know, I mean, Cork gave, gave um, a comprehensive beating to, to Antrim out there. But it was a competitive game. It was held in Crow Park as well in headquarters. And, and that brought on the team. It brought on the confidence of the team. Because it was not certainly in the most of final against Waterford. The good thing about it, boss, is this is the last year of the six weeks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Next, yeah. Year, next yeah. year, you're going to have quarterfinals. So yeah. the biggest break you'll have next year will be two or three. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. the last year of that. But yeah. Yeah. And in fairness, we've seen <laughs> the system sort of evolve over the years. Yes. There's a bit more tweaking yeah. to be done. Correct. Yeah. And this is yeah. the yeah. next step in it. This is the next step to make it better. Now, now Donald has another point, which will probably be the next step for the four or five years down the road, that the provincial uh, championships will suffer. But I don't think they'll suffer over the next two or three years. No, I don't think so. I don't think we'll, we'll be without our monster <coughs> final, no. <as> the final <laughs> no, no. for a while yet. No, no. Uh, and let's not. look at some aspects of the second half of this game. I think something would have pleased Donald very much is the way they took their scores in the second I mean, Jerry O'Connor was superb today, and Joe Dean is just class. Well, Jerry was, was, was all over the place, uh, Michael. I mean, he got six points from play. And I mean, here's Ben, actually. This is Ben coming up the wing again. And like, Ben was terrific as well. And there's some fierce pace inside. Again, look, it's, it was like the Ben and Jerry show there at one yeah. stage, right? I mean, the hand pass out. I mean, that's a fantastic point. On the run off the left hand. And like, they were getting points like that all over the feed. Here the wall comes up the wing to Joe Dean. Joe again, I mean, we got a lot more room. Got more pace to the end. His confidence is going to be high after that. I mean, okay. Joe was probably suffering a bit of confidence himself. Wasn't mm. having a fantastic championship. That's the big benefit you know? today for Big Joe. benefit, you yeah. know. Give yeah. him possession, get two or three yeah. points over the barn. Mm. It starts lifting his confidence. And uh, you can't fault anybody. All over the field, sure. Cork were very good today. Well, the O'Connors already have all their medals out of Crow Park this year, so I'm sure they'll be hoping for one or two more. Yeah. Uh, looking at the Cork defence as well, I mean, you know, Wexford didn't come up here to get the chance today. No, they the did, spectacular no, always stands out and the great scores always stand out. O'Grady is a great believer in this thing of blocking and hooking and harassing and don't let him get don't let him get a shot in the ball. Look at all the, the times there that the player has been blocked. Constantly under pressure. Look at that. Another man coming in. And uh, surrounding the man in position. Very like the football yeah. in a way. And even when you when the last person gets the ball, mm. he's still under so much pressure that he doesn't get a clear chance of that. And that is why they kept it down to twelve points. And remember today. They scored more today than they scored against Antrim. Yes. Mm. Now, who will give, the, give you odds on that coming in today? Sure, but, yeah. but the uh, secret really is how they cut down the scores from the opposing forwards. And it's magnificent work rate. And it's all the sort of... If, if, a, if a midfield doesn't cover back, mm. O'Grady will be out there eating him. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's that kind of work rate, teamwork, that's the kind of stuff that yeah. made him into such a great team, apart from the spectacular play that the like O'Connor's and all those. Yeah. I mean, I've watched some training on a good few sure, occasions, yeah, right? Yeah. And the, the emphasis that Donald puts into the hooking, the blocking, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the mundane stuff, it's this. boring, it's basics of hurling, and you can see the players so no, say, no, no, not this again. Yeah, yeah. But it comes into play in you the game so much, today. and you see it today, stopping the opposition from scoring, mm -hmm. getting the hurling, getting the hook, and Kilkenny are absolutely brilliant at that as well. They yeah. put an awful lot. Even guys going through... Happened to bond the hurry. Yeah. Just a little flick, yeah. no foul committed. And I mean, yeah. you, you play the way you train, and certainly uh, over the last couple of weeks, Cork have put an awful lot of effort into that type of training. One hero for Wexford today. There weren't too many heroes, unfortunately, for them, was once again Damien Fitzhenry. I mean, with I mean him, he's, he's had a fantastic year, Michael, there's no yeah. doubt about that. And he's, he's, he's saved Wexford on so many occasions. And again, this is a great shot again. And I mean, what a, what a save. <coughs> Now right down, to the corner. Right into the corner, down yeah. the far pole, down the far side of the post, and it's a terrific drive across the goal and a great block. And again, he has the presence of mind to be maybe to get back up off his feet again nearly as quickly, shot. you know, yeah. and move the throw the ball out for 65. I mean, he's had a fantastic year, and he certainly, I mean, the competition for all star goalkeeper has never been hotter. No, the way it's gone in the championship this That's year, right. you know. But yeah, like, right, right. with saves like that, I think he's maybe put himself ahead of the passy at this stage. It also shows the confidence that Jordan has now, you know. He didn't yeah. hit and hold, mm -hmm. turns straight mm -hmm. at him, he aimed right into the corner of the net, you know. His confidence is back. Jerry O'Connor is a massive boost mm. to, to Cork in field. Mm. The defence, even without John Garner, or yes. Pat Mulcahy, played excellently today. Mm. Cork are coming on with every game. The back door has really suited him. I think the, the crucial day for Cork was half-time against Tipperary yeah, in the right. playoffs. playoffs. Four yeah. or five points mm. down. Mm. Now was the time that to show whether they, were going, whether they wanted to win the Ireland or not. They showed it and they did it. It's been a disappointing day, obviously, for the people of Wexford and especially for their manager, John Connor. He's put an awful lot of work into this team. They came up here with all the hopes in the world today. They just didn't work out. John is with Darren now. John, what went wrong out there today? 
Thank God if I knew that. <laughs> uh, we just didn't perform on the day. We, we never got out of the traps at all. We were very flat all through. We, we found it very difficult to get our momentum going and our movement going on the day. And it was just a bad day for us. This six-week break, it didn't do you any favours really, did it, from winning the Leinster title to coming here today? Yeah, but I don't think it's an excuse really, you know. Uh, possibly if we had to have another championship game, it would have uh, kept us, kept our sharpness. But I don't know if that was the actual fact. Uh, we had injuries going into the match, which we were struggling to get over. The lads worked very hard to get themselves right for it, and uh, we played them on the day. But we were, we were flat in a lot of areas. We just didn't seem to be able to get our, our, our momentum going. But you can't take away from Cork's win today. I mean, Cork were huge today. They played fantastic hurling. They were out first to the ball. Their movement was super. They their uh, passing, their scoring, their skill level, everything about it looked very much that they're going to be high contenders for an All-Ireland Championship now. Yeah, well you've played Kilkenny, beaten Kilkenny, you've lost to Cork today. What sort of a final will that be? Yeah, well, we lost badly to Cork today and we beat Kilkenny, so where does that leave the Championship of Ireland? But I think we, had, we worked really, really hard for the Kilkenny game and we peaked at that particular stage and possibly we didn't play as well against Offaly and when it came to uh, today we were a gun flatter again. And if, you know, hurling you move in peaks and troughs, we had, to, we had to be on top of it the day we played Kilkenny. We were on top of our game that particular day. To, to hold the momentum was the thing to do and uh, we just didn't seem to be able to do it today but having said that I, I have to say that these this bunch of Wexford lads are, are a great bunch of lads they've given tremendous enjoyment to us all through we hadn't a bad year we won an Insta final after seven after seven years which was great and uh, so be it we, we, we'll go back to the drawing board and you know next year's another year and we'll see how we'll get on at that thanks John thank you for your time yeah. cheers well, that's exactly the point, isn't it? It might be a bad day for Wexford. It's been a good summer winning that Leinster Championship. They can't take that away from them at all. Who's going to win the All-Ireland? I'll be asking Geron to most that after the break. It's about the All-Ireland final in just a moment. But before that, let's hear from the fans who were here for the match today what they thought about it all. I think very well Cork played better than they have for years. And we were most anxious to get another clash of Kilkenny. We gave him a present last year, but we won't be giving him any present this year. The best members on the team too was David Sussendry, and I'm a Cockman. And he, was, he played a fantastic game. And if we had him, we'd win we'd more Ireland. Yeah, I guess uh, Cork were very overwhelming there. Done very well. Um, not so sure about the six weeks today. I, I don't think the, the score had anything to do with that. So just Cork were far better in that stage, really. There's no excuses. Kilkenny are a great team. DJ Kerr to win. Henry Shepherd's probably the best hurler in the country. But Cork. Sully's going to get him. We're doing our best. Go on, Sully. Go on, Sully. Go on, Sully. Go Sully's going to get him. Be wide of him. Sully's going to get you. Sully's going to get you. Um, have to say, you know, I felt that confident going up. Didn't expect us to win by as much. But uh, very happy. And uh, the only time to kick a cat in the ass is when its tail is up. <laughs> Come on, Cork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no one. <laughs> <laughs> the the day. Oh, it's the best of all. Not the best of all. And the response to it. Oh, yes, he's dead right. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. I mean, um, there's, there's a, okay, there's, there's obviously a great buzz today amongst Cork people, naturally enough, after a big win like this. But now, in the next couple of weeks, reality is going to have to settle down on all of this kind of thing. Because Wexford are sitting back, or sorry, Kilkenny are sitting back with their arms folded and looking at this, and I have no doubt they're nodding. Yes, yeah. big time. I mean, Kilkenny have shown, Michael, everything but the kitchen sink has been thrown at Kilkenny this year. And they've came up trumps, battled hardened, a defence that's playing as good as any team in the country at the moment, right, on the base of the six backs, the half back like Peter Barry, JJ did and he's probably playing the best hurling of his career, probably the hurling, uh, hurler of the year at this stage, you know, and um, it's going to take an almighty task from Cork yeah. to, to actually dispose of them, because, like, they've had the three or four big, big games under their belt. I think we have a great chance. There's no doubt about that. I mean, if you, if you, if we can move the ball as quickly as we moved it today, open it up. Certainly, Kilkenny have proven that they can actually be fallible on the bases, and Wexford proved that this year. Open the game up and take them on at every opportunity. I think Cork have a great chance to actually win the final. But I mean, it's 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 going to be a ding dong battle. And um, as I say, 28 titles each. I would I would fancy Cork to win it. And the final word from Sherlock now. Well, I suppose, Michael, if we all put our county loyalties aside at the start mm. of the year. The one game we'd all love to see again was a repeat of last year's Ireland, and Cork and Kilkenny. In spite of all the great displays by other teams, we, that we have got that now. Yeah. I think Kilkenny will go into this game delighted that Cork trounced the Wexford today. You know, I was talking to the game last week, he said, I hope they'll be at the living, you know, what out of them, you know, because mm -hmm. it'll, it'll really alert, not alone the players, but all of Kilkenny to what's coming up. 
Now, I think there's the secret to beating Kilkenny that everybody knows is getting past that, that half-back line. Not lobbing high ball. They're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a game of tactics, much like you had today. I think Cork have a terrific chance of doing it. But I think Kilkenny's desire to win that three in a row is going to be savage hard to overcome. But ask me five minutes before the trial. <laughs> before we Come start. On, give us your answer. <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. All right, then. It's time for us to go. We have more from Athens coming up uh, right here after this programme. But here at Croke Park, earlier in the day, we saw Galway qualify for the minor final in the senior game. Well, it just wasn't to Wexford today. Cork was simply in a different class. It's a repeat, as we've said, of last year's final. Now, what a battle that's going to be. Until the next time, bye-bye. Out of over 63,000 gathered at Crow Park for today's second semi-final, expectations were high on both sides. Cork were first to register a score, Jerry O'Connor opening their account. Within a minute, Wexford had responded, on Quigley with a great strike from the wing. But as the half continued, it was the Rebels who started to dominate. With just ten minutes gone, they nearly had the first goal of the game, Corcoran finding the inrushing Timmy McCarthy, but the superb Damien Fitzhenry deflected over for a point. However, Wexford seemed unable to respond as Cork continued to pull away and suffered a hammer blow from Tom Kenny after a great run blasted the ball to the back of the net. Throughout the field, Cork were displaying a different class and went into the interval 1.13 to 4 points in front. In the second half, Wexford needed an early score and that's exactly what they got from centre-back Declan Ruth. But Cork swiftly settled back into their first half routine, displaying some exhibition hurling. It was one of those afternoons when nothing was going right for the Leinster champions. Donal O'Cusick denying Mitch Jordan's attempt at goal. Damien Fitzhenry was again called upon to stop a cracker from Joe Dean. But the game was over as a contest long before the final whistle. The Rebel County looking impressive as they booked their place in the final. To be honest now, you know, it's going to be a different ball game four weeks time. Like, you know, we won't get the same space of fluency. But all we have to do is just maintain on what we did today. And, um, you know... We're in the North all Ireland final and uh, to be honest now, we were beaten last year and we have a great chance to come for that uh, four weeks time. Well, I think Sean Oak says it all there. Cork in another final in four weeks' time. Well, I'm joined now by a very happy man, the manager of the Cork Hurlers, Donald O'Grady. Donald, let's start by saying, how happy were you with that performance today? You must be delighted with it. Well, I suppose the first 25 minutes, were, you know, we, we played very well. We were expecting a very, very difficult game from Wexford. And, um, you know, the first six minutes was nip and talk up and down the field. I don't think there was a stoppage and there was no freeze, I don't think. And, you know, having said that, we, we, we got a few points on the board. And the goal by Tom Kennedy thing halfway through the, the first half was a great score. And, uh, you know, that settled us. You're going to play Kilkenny now. It's a repeat of last year's All-Ireland Final. That must be very satisfactory to get another crack at Kilkenny. Well, I don't know if it's satisfactory or not. I mean, they're the top team in Ireland for the last three years. You know, they're very, very difficult to beat. They're proven champions. And, um, you know, I suppose we have to fulfil the fixture and come up and try and play them. But, you know, we'd be under no illusions of, of, of how tough and not Kilkenny are to crack, you know. But, you know, I suppose we'll come up and do our best. And, and, and if we're good enough, we win it. And if we're not good enough, we won't. But playing Kilkenny 12 months on, that's a great incentive for the lads, surely. Well, you know, Kilkenny are going for the three in a row and, and, and every team that's going for the three in a row want to win it. We're, we're going for one in a row and we'd like to win that having been beaten last year, you know. So every team that comes up to an all Ireland final, you don't go, you don't set out to lose it, but, you know, there's only one team good enough and we hope we're good enough, but, um, you know, at this point in time, you know, Kilkenny are favourites and, you know, they're the, they're the team to beat, they're still the team to beat, they've done everything right this year, apart that little slip up to the Leinster semi-final. And, you know, we'd be hoping to do our best and if it's good enough for the day, so be it. Donald, thanks very much and congratulations to you. Well, there you have it, Eamon. Cork and Kilkenny in the all Ireland final in four weeks time thanks Peter well still on Gaelic Games Galway Miners over
played very well in the first half. Um, I was just talking to Larry Murphy there after the match, and I think that he, you know, we were talking about the six-week lay layoff, and I don't think they handled that very well in that they were very flat. They played much, much better in the second half. It was more of a, an even, Stephen game, but I suppose we were so far in front that that stage, that was very hard for them to come back, you know. So you have to be pleased with that performance. Um, you know, we made a lot of mistakes, a lot of old silly things, but you know, a little bit of showboating maybe here and there that, that wouldn't do in a more competitive game. But you know, we have a few weeks not to work on that. You know, hurling you move in peaks and troughs. We had to, we had to be on top of it the day we played Kilkenny. We were on top of our game that particular day. To, to hold the momentum was the thing to do and uh, we just didn't seem to be able to do it today. But having said that, I, I have to say that these, this bunch of Wexford lads are, are a great bunch of lads. They've given tremendous enjoyment to us all through. We hadn't a bad year. We won against the final after seven, after seven years, which was great. And uh, so be it. We, we, we'll go back to the drawing board. And, you know, next year's another year, and we'll see how we'll get on at that. Kilkenny, they're, they're the top team that haven't been beaten, apart from the Wexford game, for, you know, three or four years. And we have to fulfil this fixture, I suppose, and we'll do the best we can, you know. But, you know, it's going to be it's going to be very tough. I mean, Kilkenny have you know, this is their home. They play here nearly every second week at this stage. You know, so they'll be well up for it. And you know, they're going for the three in a row, and we're trying to go for one in a row. And you know, it should be a good game. And you know, whoever whoever will deserve it to win it on the day will deserve it. And that's the way things are. We were most anxious to get another clash of Kilkenny. We gave them a present last year. We won't be giving them any present this year. Cog were very overwhelming there. Done very well. Um, not so sure about the six weeks today. I, I don't think the, the score had anything to do with that. It's just Cargo far better than that's it, really. There's no excuses. I have to say, you know, I felt the confident going up. Didn't expect us to win by as much, but uh, very happy. And uh, the only time to kick a cat in the ass is when its tail is up. <laughs> Come on, Cork! <laughs> so this was a bit like one of Michael Schumacher's Grand Prix victories. A, a procession for Cork? Yeah, a fantastic win for them. I, I think it was the best performance by Cox since, uh, since uh, Donald Grade took over. They, they started out of traps very fast. I took the game from the very beginning, and it was like, uh, you know, the Bin and Jerry show, really, the two O'Connors. Cox were on top ever, really. Maybe Adrian Finland held his own, but other than that, they were creeping away, looking at the match, five or six points to two up. Next team, the great goal went in, and the game was actually gone. But I think Wexford, if they analyse their year, will feel that the day of the Leinster final, Pat, even though they beat Offaly. The first half, Offaly could have been up 10 points at half time. I don't think that was ever rectified. And like they were caught today, Cork didn't miss them chances. And once they got in front, they were never going to be caught. Now, John Connell earlier said Wexford never got out of the traps today. <coughs> they appeared to be very much off the pace today. Why was that? Well, it's quite hard to know, Pat. Um, they're, they're talking about this six week layoff or whatever, like, you know. And you know, sometimes a layoff arrest sometimes would do a team uh, wonders, you know, but I, I think in Wexford's case, we have to be hurling. You know, if you've got to beat the likes of Kilkenny or Corks, we have to be hurling week after week, whether it's club championship or whatever the case may be. But we came up today with great expectation, like, I mean, as Cyril said, the Leinster final, we won the Leinster, that's grand, but there was a lot of hiccups along the line as well. We could have been down 10 or 12 points at half time. We were right to fight out in the second half. Came in today's game, as I said, with big expectation. And, and, and uh, I tell you, it, it flopped on us. You know, and unfortunately, like I mean, you know, fair play to the players. Like I mean, they have given it a great service and a great year so far, as up to date for Wexford. But today it was Cork's day, and we couldn't match him. Cyril, we've had the Tom and Jolly show for years. Today we got the the Bin and Jolly show. Yeah, New Town Centre would be happy. And you know, Pat, the better type of horn, it's, it's all skill really. Like you see shots coming up here. Like these guys have skill to burn. Great support there. Going down here along the left, takes could have gone left and went right. Bang over the bar. I think Jerry probably had six shots today. Pat has scored most of them. Jody in here had a lovely little game today. Again, watch a little support play here. Little hand flick across here. Comes back out here to Jerry again. And one look up, bang, right over the bar again. Every chance that that cock, any chance they got today, they scored. And that was the big difference. They were pulling away the whole time. Listen, so, you know, for many years we've had possession, possession game in Gaelic football. But after the day, am I correct in stating that there's a possession game evolving in hurling? And cock showed that today. Well, Pat, through this year, Newton Chandram came to the fore last year. Here you're going to see Cork. It, there is possession game of Cork. Blocked out here. Well, helping you win the brilliant game. Gets this ball. Now, it isn't just happening by accident. They're looking for support. Little hand flick. Back. Ball gone. Now, Newton Chandram started this possession game. And Cork, the experts on there were given out about it. But I think the Cork team have adopted as well. Because, again, you're going to see high ball in here. This guy is as strong as a bull. Just, just a little hand flick out. Bottled up. Another little hand flick away here. And it's gone again. But this was actually happening all the game, though, Pat. You know, every time a Cork man, if he was in trouble, he would steady up. He would turn his back to, to the opponent. He would look back and throw the ball back and bang up the field. So but they're actually relaxed, they were calm on the ball, they never seemed to panic, and every time they worked, worked so hard for one another. And that's a very, very hard thing to be doing. 
through the whole game. Cork actually done it from start to finish. But Larry, t- they, they play that game against Antrim as well. It's very easy to play that sort of game when you have loads of space uh, and an extra man, which they had against Antrim and which they had today. They won't get that space and that extra man against Kilkenny if they indulge in that game, will, well, will, it, fa- will it flounder? Well, it'll be a different game altogether, <laughs> altogether against again Kilkenny because uh, Kilkenny have a different style of hurling as well compared to Cork. Now, Cork are, are a running team. Over the last number of years, I think Kilkenny have become a big physical team, but yet they're good hurlers and well able to hurl as well. So, you know, I think if, if Kilkenny will have to get in there first and stop these runners because, you know, if, if not, the same result might happen today against Kilkenny. How disappointed are Wexford after today? I mean, big expectations, Linster title, and uh, yeah, have failed to deliver. I know, yeah, at the start of the year, like, I mean, um, maybe the start of the National League, you know, things weren't going well. We won one, lost two, two, three or four, and won another one, and drew another one, or whatever. And the expectation wasn't great. And all of a sudden, we came into the Kilkenny game, no one gave us a chance. They no actually ri- 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 rinsed us off to the end. Everyone, even the dogs on the street, the cows in the field, they actually had rinsed us off to give us no chance. Beat Kilkenny, went on to win a Leinster title. And, you know, I'd say a lot of people would be happy, you know, because but we could be knocked out early. and Wexford, or inconsistency, seems to dog these Wexford team in recent years. Yeah. One great performance and the next one is a... Yeah, but I, I, I definitely, the Kilkenny game to me now would be the game that Wexford really geared up for, you know. But, you know, we were trying to build on that, build on that. Still we to to go back. The, the cracks that appeared in the, in the Leinster final, first half, when they should have been out of sight, when off they should have been out of sight, did they paper over those cracks coming into the Sybil? Well, they tried to, but like maybe the inactivity caught them. But you see, Cork played that possession game, beautiful controlled hurling, beautiful wrist hurling, and missed no scores. Now, Pat, Cork have been living all year to get into the Ireland final, and they've been living to get in against Kilkenny. Now, the only disadvantage Cork have going in now is that Kilkenny know what to expect. Well, okay, we'll, we'll, be hip and whip. we'll go into a little bit more detail on the final maybe later on. Cyril, it's your choice tonight. Contenders for Man of the Match, and eventually, who did you choose? Well, Sean Ogle had been at a fantastic game for 70 minutes. Ronan Corden was brilliant. Tom Kenny was brilliant. Ben O'Connor. You, you could name 14 or 15, all Cork fellas. But to me today, who did six out of six, Jerry O'Connor. A super. Pr- and we have some clips of him in action again. Oh, the show yeah. continues. Keep this tell guy. us about... This guy, beautiful skill, left or right, any, any, any chance he got, set up by, by Ben a lot of the times. So you've got a little hand pass by Ben here. You, know you think he's going to go right, sends a, sends a dummy. Then Ginn goes on again, left handed over the bar. It's not many times you see a midfielder scoring six points from play. Brilliant for skill. Six out of six, I think, deserved, deserved man of the match. Well, after the game, uh, after the game our reporter, Dara Maloney, spoke to this afternoon's man of the match winner, Jerry O'Connor. Well, Jerry, congratulations. There were a lot of contenders for the RTE Man of the Match award. You've won it. Very, very pleased with your own display and with the team's display today, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a great day for the team. We knew coming up, we were under pressure. Uh, a lot of people have us written off all year, but I think today we showed that we can hold. And hopefully now we're looking forward to the next day against Kilkenny. That'll be a final to savour. Yeah, hopefully. We, we were disappointed last year, very disappointed. We had the game put in our grasp, but we didn't take it, unfortunately. But yeah, we have second chance now and hopefully we'll be able to take this year. To the opening game at Croke Park this afternoon and the meeting of Cork and Galway in the second of this year's minor semi-finals. We joined the match midway through the